ఓకే గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ సో కంటిన్యూ విత్ ది సిరీస్ ఆఫ్ లెక్చర్స్ ఆన్ డిసి బ్రిడ్ సర్క్యూట్స్ టుడేస్ లెక్చర్ వుడ్ బి ఆన్ హై రెసిస్టెన్స్ మెజర్మెంట్ అండ్ నౌ ఇన్ ది లాస్ట్ టూ క్లాసెస్ వీ హెడ్ సీన్ ది వీట్ స్టోన్స్ బ్రిడ్జ్ ఫర్ medium resistance measurement and the kelvin bridge circuit for low resistance measurement in the in this class in this lecture we will look at a guarded wheatstone bridge and the mega circuit both of these circuits can be used to measure very high value resistance that is resistance of say hundreds of mega ohm and above in giga ohm range resistances okay and uh, and resistances like that you would have for insulators also or earth so these these are the applications where you can where you can expect really high resistances and <coughs> required circuits that can measure such resistances okay let's go into the topic now so while measuring resistances of very high value what you would have here is that let us say you have a high value resistance here and of course there is an insulator around it okay so because the actual resistance is of high value and the insulator is basically another resistance whose resistance is not really infinite it is also very high so what you end up with is a giga ohm resistance here and another resistance which is of a comparable range so the resistance of the insulation will also become comparable to the test resistance so leakage current that is the current that is going through this insulator which typically in typical applications will be much much less than the current flowing through the main circuit that now in this case in case of high resistance uh, cases would become comparable to actual current so that some mechanism should be made to take care of that okay and uh, the the circuit now becomes uh, vulnerable to stray charges accumulation of stray charges also because again on a similar reason the amount of current that is flowing through so if you have a giga ohm resistance and even if you connect say 1000 volts to this okay then you will have current that is flowing in microamp range so any stray charge can induce a current of a comparable magnitude so so you would need proper sheathing and shielding to take care of this electrostatic effect and the disturbances that you get or the errors that you get by stray <coughs> charges also okay in addition uh, when you have the insulation when when you are measuring insulation resistance of an insulator let us say okay so you have an insulator you don't expect current to through go through the insulator let us say you are grounding this you are having a terminal here and you are putting a voltage source across this and trying to measure the resistance in this path okay but is actually would function like a capacitor and resistor in parallel so which would mean that this will this will form this would form a circuit with a time constant of rc now r is large and rc would now tend to some value that is in the minutes now so before you make a measurement you would need to wait because this will act like a slowly charging capacitor okay so this charging period should also be taken into account 
while making these measurements okay so let's go into this concept now what we have seen is that because of the resistance of the insulation being comparable to the resistance of the actual resistor uh, you would need some protective circuits okay so the protective concept that you have is called as a guard wire concept this is simply a wire so if you have if you have a, a binding post here so you want the current through go to go through this binding post okay however what you would what what you would have here is that because of this insulation resistance being comparable to the resistance that is there in the circuit you would have some current that is flowing through this insulator also okay so that can be sort of bypassed you know, that can be the effect of that can be reduced by adding a guard wire okay so this current that instead of flowing into the main circuit it should get bypassed and it should flow back it should flow back into the <coughs> supply again so that is being done here so this so what you are providing is that the leakage resistance leakage current that flows through the uh, in uh, insulator that has been given a path to flow through the back to the battery so from the battery okay from the circuit if you have ix plus il it is not going into the resistor and retest okay the guard wire will connect the insulation directly to the battery leakage current would be intercepted and would wouldn't pass through the bit circuit no okay so this is this is a typical <coughs> circuit diagram in which a guard wire is being utilized okay so this guard point is basically you have a resistor and a test and this is the guard point this is so you have the <coughs> uh, you have the battery here and this guard point is connected to the battery okay so what you would have here is there is a current i plus il that is flowing il flows through this and flows back okay and this and then the further this bridge circuit doesn't get affected by this leakage current il okay and the guard wire is now wrapped around a binding post for the unknown resistance so either so you have a insulation here and it is basically it is wrapped around the insulator okay it is not really connected to any real part of the circuit okay so ideally in a, in a, in a, in a usual scenario in in a low current low resistance scenario the guard wire being connected to an insulator and is basically an open circuit so you would not expect any current to flow through this okay but since there is another terminal here that which is powered okay this high value of resistance can play a part if the other resistance in the circuit are comp are of comparable value okay and what should be noted is no other part of the circuit should come between the battery and the guarded terminal if there is any circuit component here that is going to tamp that is going to alter this leakage resistance and that is that will affect the reading that we get note that the leakage resistance leakage current cannot be eliminated only its effect can be reduced so instead of ix plus il being measured as the current through the circuit because in in the, in the actual case 
you don't have you don't expect this il to happen at all okay but if you have so what you would do is that all the circuitry all the measurement circuitry is after this guarded terminal so what we are measuring here is only i x here or something that is proportional to i x being measured here okay. and i l doesn't figure out in the measurement and if you don't have this guard uh, guard terminal and if you don't use this bypass then what you would measure is i x plus i l and you would assume that this is the same as the current that should that is flowing into the bridge circuit okay now this is a high voltage mega ohm bridge circuit which is just a wheatstone's bridge with a guard point and a guard terminal now guard point is the is the point on the unknown resistance okay which would be connected which is which is on the insulation with the which is on the insulation of the unknown resistance and which can be connected to a part of the circuit okay the guard terminal is a point on the on the bridge circuit to which this guard uh, guard terminal is a point on the bridge circuit to which this guard point is connected to give a path to the leakage current okay now in this case what you have here is there is a resistor rx here and the third terminal so you have a three terminal resistance okay in the low resistance case you had a four terminal resistance here in the high resistance case you have a resistance that is three terminal with one of the terminals being the insulation point being kept on the insulator now in this case there is a resistance a high resistance ra between one of the ends of the resistor and the insulation and similarly for rb okay now what is happening is that when you connect this guard point to the junction between r1 and r2 effectively what you are doing is that ra is in parallel of r with r1 and rb is in parallel with the galvanometer that will be connected here that has been connected here okay so here rx is the and uh, the high value resistance meter uh, under test it's a three terminal resistance and the guard point is connected to the junction between the ratio arms r1 and r2 okay as i said earlier the resistances ra and rp represents the leakage current paths to the insulation and in this configuration you have ra in parallel to r1 and rb in parallel to the galvanometer and because of this uh, you effectively have um, this being changed from r1 to r1 parallel ra and the galvanometer the drop across the galvanometer the res effective resistance across the galvanometer will be rb parallel to rg but r a is much much greater than r1 and rb is much much greater than the galvanometer resistance in fact this you can you need not even consider the second part because the galvanometer as such is a very low resistance device so rb being rb will be much means will be magnitudes greater than the galvanometer resistance so this effectively what you have here is that these resistances effectively come out become become irrelevant they come out of the circuit okay so it they it, it eliminates the effect of ra and rb on the circuit however if this was not used what you would end up with is so if this guard terminal was not you what you end up with is instead of rx what you are what would be measuring is rx parallel ra plus rb okay though this may not be a significant means though you can have you may have ra plus rb to be greater than rx this effect may 
cause a, a a good change in the value of rx on the estimated value of rx or the calculated value of rx okay so this should be avoided so if the garternal was not used the measured value will be much lesser than the actual value So that was how to measure using the GART terminal and another specific device that can be used to measure high value resistance is called as a mega or a mega ohm <coughs> meter okay so it is basically it's a ratio meter so you have we have seen meters that either work on a single current or work on a product of two currents okay so in the single current we have the pmmc meter and the product of current current you had an electrodynamometer with it okay and now in a ratio meter what you have is something that whose display is dependent on the ratio of two currents okay let's have a look at it so this is the mega circuit Okay. it is basically not connected to any power source it self powers used itself um, with a cranked uh, generator okay you can see there is a guard terminal there is a line and earth okay which is connected actually to the resistor under test so this guard terminal will be connected like this <coughs> okay now <coughs> in a ratio meter you'll have you typically have two coils that are placed in the field of an electromagnet and these coils are placed are physically at 90 degrees uh, deflection okay and they are basically connected to one another they can't move independently okay and if you, if current i1 flows through one coil and i2 flows through another coil at any point theta the deflection torque that is produced by i1 will be given as uh, with this expression and with i2 will be this expression okay and now at, at equilibrium you will have tau1 equal to tau2 okay and uh, even if you take into account that these factors may be different what you eventually end up is, is that at equilibrium point you will have some k times i1 by i2 is equal to tan theta okay or basically tan theta is proportional to i1 by i2 now if you can if you can change the shape of the poles in a manner such so that these uh, proportionalities change with theta you can see you can make it so that i1 by i2 is proportional to theta also okay, this is in case of a ratio meter however in case of a mega where we are using as an ohm meter we don't utilize this okay we keep it at tan theta and we do some other modifications also Okay, so let's come to the mega circuit so as expected you'll have a current coil and a voltage coil because you want v by i okay so the current coil is connected in series with the resistor under test so you have this is this resistor under test and it is connected here to the current coil oh sorry it is connected here to the current coil this is the connection this is the permanent magnet okay and you also have the voltage coil here okay which is connected across this resistance voltage coil or the pressure coil and you have a hand driven generator that powers this entire circuit okay and the current coil and pressure coil are at a physical 
this uh, deviation of 90 degree angle note that these two coils in reality are one unit okay they can't move coils can't move independently okay so you can't you if the current coil moves the voltage coil should also move by the same angle okay however the torques produced by the current coil and the pressure coils would be in opposite directions so they would arrive at some equilibrium point okay now the pressure coil is kept in a manner that when the current coil is open circuited okay this will settle the, the voltage coil will want to settle in this position so voltage coil so when c current is zero voltage is some voltage it will settle at this point okay and if the voltage coil is so this is this is an open circuit so let me again draw this properly so this is an open circuit configuration okay where current is zero voltage is something and this is a short circuit configuration okay where current is some current is flowing and the voltage of the voltage coil is zero okay now when this is happening it should indicate at as r is zero and this is r is infinity okay and these coils are configured so that appropriate indication is happening at this appropriate uh, situations okay now what is also to be noted is the pressure coil is placed in such a way that it is in the weak magnetic field it is outside this magnetic field because the voltage coil is offset the pressure coil is offset its center is not at the center of this um, what do you call the permanent magnet Okay, it is placed yeah, and so it is placed in a manner that it is in a weak magnetic field when the pointer is pointing at infinity and as it goes as the pointer changes position this voltage coil moves further and further into the magnetic field okay so the proportionality or the proportionality of that uh, voltage coils torque would increase Okay. and the voltage range can be controlled by using these different points okay and as i said earlier the power powering is through a hand crank generator okay now because of this geometry what is happening is that the meter constant of the pressure coil increases as the coil moves towards the magnetic field moves into the magnetic field or or in other words the pointer goes towards zero however the pressure coil stock is moving in the opposite direction okay the pressure coil stock is moving in the opposite direction and this entire geometry will now act like a spring for the pressure coil it will act like a spring that is very stiff near r equal to zero okay it is stiff near r equal to zero and it is loose near r equal to infinity okay so near r equal to zero it will take a lot of effort for it to move and near r equal to infinity with little effort it can move okay now if rx is open circuited as i said it will settle towards innate infinity okay when it is when it is when these terminals are uh, shorted then it will settle at zero and when rx is connected uh, when the current coil is also connected both will act and an equilibrium position is reached 
okay and since the measure now the measure will now work as a ratio meter so the deflection would be proportional to v by i okay now however this k value decreases as the resistance increases okay. because that meter constant of your pressure coil the effective meter constant of your pressure coil is decreasing so what this would happen what this would do is that it will lead to the scale between scale being more prominent at lower resistance and more uh, bunched up at lower uh, at higher resistance so as we have, let me let's have have a look at it in the megahertz image that we have seen okay here so you would see that the change here with the with the small deflection it goes from say 100k not even 100k this is in mega ohm so 100000 mega ohm to 50000 mega ohm okay and on this other side this is in a similar scale or even even in a larger this thing larger deviation it goes only from 10 to 20 mega ohm so the scale is much more spread out here than it is here. Okay. So, and the other point is that uh, technically the torques tau one and tau two, okay, would depend upon what was the what is the current that is flowing. What is the actual current that is flowing through these two components this i1 and i2 okay and this i1 and i2 depend upon the resistance on one part they but they also depend upon what is the voltage that is produced here okay the supply voltage okay however both of them uh, are proportional to the supply voltage okay and we are taking the ratio v by i or i1 by i2 effectively okay hence this ratio is not affected is effectively it's not it's not dependent upon the supply voltage now so as both the sub as both v and i are affected by the supply voltage the effective reading the total reading is not affected by the supply voltage Okay, so that with that we come to the end of this uh, particular lecture and these are the chapters that you can refer to to know better about these topics. Okay, and uh, thank you for your patience.